Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of HubSpot's Inbound Now. I'm your host, David Wells, and joined with me here today is Mr. John Jantz. Hey David, uh, thanks for having me. It's so funny to do these video interviews because I'm watching you speak and it's not, you know, it's like the Japanese movies, you know, the, with the uh, subtitles, you know, what you're saying and your what your lips are saying aren't the same thing. But We'll you know. sync it up in post-production, don't worry <laughs> about that. Actually, yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, you do an audio podcast, it's awesome, Duct Tape Marketing, it was actually named by uh, Fast Company as, you know, a must-listen. Um, John also owns his own marketing agency and has, has done so the past 25 years. Um, he's the author of Duct Tape Marketing um, and the, his latest book, The Referral Engine. Um, he's a, a contributor on the Amex Open Forum um, and a ton of other stuff. His, his blog is awesome as well. I'm, I'm really happy to get you on the show here. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, you guys are doing, have done, you know, for years, uh, some some great stuff, and 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 I think I'm really, you know, in tune with what you're doing too. The the, the idea of content, and building trust, and something that you guys have uh, have you know probably do as well as anybody. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cool, cool. So yeah, I wanted to get you on the show here today to talk, you know, a, a lot of the stuff from your your latest book, Referral Engine. You know, creating a systematic approach to uh, for for companies to create more referrals. Um, forming strategic referral partnerships, and you know, if we have a little bit of time, I do want to dive into you know what you've been doing with your podcast over the years. Sure, sounds sure, good. Sure, sounds great. Awesome, awesome. So, um, you talk a lot in the book about having a systematic approach to generating more leads and referrals. Um, so, so why is it so critical that companies kind of have a system in place? Well, pretty simple. It goes back to really anything. Get done a future and 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 build into every business. Uh, taking this approach of a system so important. I I've, can't tell you how small business owners I've talked to over the a system for you know fixing it all the stuff they do in their business. You know hiring people, firing people, paying the bills. But then when it comes down down to marketing and, and certainly this idea of referrals, well those just sort of happen accidentally, organically. I mean we don't do anything to make them happen. Or you know gosh that's a good idea. Maybe we should do that. And and so this idea of applying that same thinking, that same systems thinking to uh, to the idea of referral generation as a, an important. Uh, part and proactive part of your marketing is is just essential. It just makes it makes life easier. On top of the fact that it'll make uh, the, the 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 fact that you deserve referrals, it'll make it'll allow you to really amplify that. Right, right. And and you did a you did a huge study uh, for the book. You know, asking business owners, you know, how how do you get most of your business? And you know, the overwhelming answer was referrals, right? But right. they didn't have that system in place. So I mean, and. Like, how can you go about starting setting up that those processes so you can start to kind of generating those kind of on a ongoing basis? Well, the the first step is, and quite frankly, it's probably the hardest one. You know, when I started to write this book, my my intent was I'm just going to document what businesses that get lots of referrals do and tell everybody you know how they're doing it. Um, and what it really came down to, and this is a secret part, and I'm going to share this. I, I haven't shared this with too many people. This is the secret. Um, uh, the, the, you know, if you're looking for that one thing you need to do, uh, the, the companies that receive more referrals are something more referable. Um, you know, sorry, you know, if, that, if that's disappointing, but that's the secret. And and I think that that's the part that a lot of people really underestimate. I mean, there are a lot of companies that, that get referrals just out of sheer sort of market momentum. You know, I don't know anybody else to call or I use these guys. They seem OK. But the companies that just really get lots of referrals, I mean, it, it, 60, 70, 80 percent of their business. It's because they they focus as much attention on creating a tremendous customer's experience as they do on focus on generating referrals or generating leads of any kind. And um, and and to some degree, what happens with people that really do that is that 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 customer experience or that happy customer uh, becomes their lead generation machine. And I and I think that that's the part that we can't under. Uh, estimate is that that you have to do that you have to fix the gaps in your referability um, as step number one right right so so you quote um, Seth Godin in the book um, saying you know if the marketplace isn't talking about you there's a reason and that reason is because you're boring right and yeah, I think it yeah. ties in well from a, from a concept in the book you know um, having a core talkable difference so so how can companies kind of identify the their unique differences in and you know how critical is that for them to do 
Well, I think it's probably, you know, I, I may say this again uh, about some other point, but I think it's probably the most important uh, thing that a small business can do. I mean, when's the last time you raved about, you know, a perfectly adequate or, or satisfactory experience, right? I mean, um, and that's the point I think that, that, that Seth is really making is that nobody talks about boring businesses. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go out and do some stunt uh, that, that gets everybody talking, uh, but it does mean that you have to realize that, that, Pretty much everyone in your industry, in your town uh, that you compete with is probably saying the exact same thing about the features and benefits and great service that they have. Um, and so you actually go to those ideal customers, those customers that, that you uh, could say, hey, I had eight or ten of these, life would be great. Uh, All right. So wait. So you we were just talking about um, identifying the differences, and you're talking about like narrowing down the unique customer, right? Your ideal customer. Yeah. Well, actually, um, actually, what I think is the most important aspect is that you find a way to differentiate your business from everybody else that that says they do what you do. Uh, the market needs a difference, and I'm telling you right now, uh, my experience is that you know everybody in your town, everybody in your industry. Uh, that is saying uh, the same thing, um, and you have to find a way to really get above that, or you're, or you're going to be uh, doomed to compete on price. Um, and so, what I often tell people that the best source for figuring out what it is that you do uh, that's remarkable is to go to your customers, go to your best customers, and and ask them, you know, why'd you hire us in the first place? What do we do that others don't? You know, what are some things we could improve? Uh, this kind of conversation, I'm not talking about sending out a survey. <laughs> I'm talking about sitting down in front of them or doing something like this um, and, and asking them those questions and push them a little. Don't let them say, well, you provide good service because um, I guarantee you everybody else says that as well. So what does good service look like to you? Um, tell me a time or tell me a story about a time when we provided good service. If you do that, this exercise, I guarantee you you're going to start hearing, or at least I hope you're going to start hearing some, some common threads or some common themes about what it is that you do that's unique. And, and my experience tells me it's probably not what you're communicating. It's probably not what you think it is. And quite often it's the little things that, that we just assume everybody in our industry is doing as well. And that's what you need to tap and start maybe making your sort of central core message about how you're different. Okay, so once you kind of get like glean that wisdom from your existing customers, what would you then do with it? Like bake well, that well, into you, your existing messaging or Yeah, you've got to find a way to, to, to communicate that in a way that, that clearly comes through in simple terms. I'll give you an example. I had an architect that I worked with years ago that uh, that like all architects said, we design good buildings. <laughs> um, we went out and uh, talked to their customers and what they told us uh, about the third time we heard this, we said, okay, stop. You know, we, we have to figure out what this means. Uh, they said, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they do uh, they do provide, you know, they do design good buildings. I mean, they have those na those letters after their names. You know, we expected them to do that. But what they really do is they help us get paid faster. Now, about as I said, about the third time we heard that, we said we've got to get to the bottom of that. What does that mean? Well, apparently, what this firm did was uh, they were really good at all the zoning stuff and cutting through the red tape and getting plans approved so that uh, the the contractor got paid because you know the, the the project moved forward and they were able to get that first draft you know so they could start the work. Um, and so what we went back to them and said, okay, tell us about this. And what it turned out, they had a couple city councilmen, you know, as architects, you know, little small suburbs and things. But they just were really, really good at the whole zoning part. And so we turned that around to be their their core message that you know we help you get paid faster became what they did for a living, and and they became the contractor's architect. And uh, just that little change and that shift when everybody else was saying we design good buildings um, was what really made a difference to to their ideal customer. And just that little. Change change in their message and and building their all their processes and even created some products that you know some some you know zoning and, and compliance products that they could buy people could buy for like 599 and those kinds of things it changed everything about their business gotcha gotcha cool cool so so the idea of, of referrals is adding value far outside of you know your own business and you talk a little bit in the book about you know forming those strategic partnerships so what would some uh, approaches that you would take that would effectively kind of increase uh, others referring your business? Yeah, I think it actually might be the most powerful um, uh, and, and underutilized tool. Uh, most people think of their own customers uh, when they think of referrals, and you know they 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 appreciate how brilliant you are. I mean, I, I get that, uh, but 
a probably greater opportunity is this idea of creating your own strategic team or strategic partners. And what I mean by that is, is a whole team of you know, non-competing businesses that, that also supply uh, best-of-class service or products uh, to and, and really target your same ideal customer. Um, and the idea behind that is if you can develop relationships with the, a group of folks like that, uh, they could uh, potentially introduce you to hundreds or maybe thousands of, of new clients by way of referral. The key to this thinking, though, is and I, because I, I, I run across a lot of folks and their mentality is, oh, yeah, we've got a couple people that, you know, we send them a lead, they send us a lead, you know, maybe we partner on a couple projects because we have a specialty, they don't. And I'm talking about something a little more uh, deeper and, and maybe more formal than that. The idea of looking at your existing customers, your best customers, and saying, okay, what are all the things that they need um, in their life or in their business, you know, to, to meet their objectives? And can I build a team you know, with, with one person uh, that I trust in each of those needs with the idea that anytime one of my customers said, gosh, do you know anybody who does X, that I could actually be seen as the go-to person to plug that person in. Now, if you take that mentality and you create a list based on that criteria, those kind of criteria, um, then you, that, that is the ideal start for then who's going to be on your team. Now, You've also got to recruit that team and you've got to amplify or, or uh, get that team, you know, excited about um, uh, doing some things. And so, you know, there's so many great, great tools uh, that, that, that you can do to, to, to do that. So often folks uh, get some folk, get some strategic, great strategic partners that say, yeah, we should be doing something together. And pretty much nothing happens after that. Right. Uh, so if you've got content, just like. Uh, you, you know, HubSpot puts out great ebooks, for example. Well, if you've got a, a, an ebook like that, that that you know your clients love and they download lots and they'd appreciate, well, go to one of your strategic partners and say, hey, would you like to send this or offer this to your customers? Hey, put your contact info on it, put your logo on it, we'll co brand it, uh, send it out. I mean, that can be a tremendous way, tangible way for you uh, to, to go to a strategic partner and say, hey, introduce me to all of your clients but do it in a way that adds value as opposed to in a way to, you know, bring me in and say, hey, you should be buying from David. Um, and so, so if you create those kinds of opportunities for your strategic partners, you're going to make it really easy for them to introduce you to their entire client base. Right, right. And, and another thing that, that you mentioned, uh, it was in a recent interview or somewhere, somewhere on the Internet I saw it. Uh, basically, you know, you say that a lot, of, a lot of times when people do set up these strategic partnerships and their referral sources, they oftentimes don't thank them for you know, sending business their way, and that's one of the biggest mistakes, right? Well, yeah, follow-up has to be part of the system, no question. And um, I kind of look at it in several ways. Follow-up, when you get a referred lead, have a special form of follow up. Let them know, hey, you know, David sent you. I mean, you know, make them understand that they're going to get special treatment or they're going to get a special deal because of that relationship is is number one. But but number two, no question, when you're getting these leads, you know, I can't tell you how many times people have told me over the years, gosh, yeah, we used to send them all kinds of business and they never thanked us. And, you know, we, we were sending them the business for the right reason is <laughs> because we knew they could help. But gosh, you know, it didn't seem like they appreciated it. And, and I think people... Um, I really think the right motivation for most people is that they're helping. Either they're helping you or they're helping their friend, you know, get what they need. Uh, but it certainly, uh, it certainly is nice to feel a little bit of appreciation. But, but also, you know, beyond that, um, I, I think sometimes follow up and say, why wow, that wasn't the right kind of lead for us, perhaps. Or follow up and say, hey, here's what we decided or here's what we came to the conclusion. Here's how we helped them. I mean, um, everybody loves to get that kind of feedback, too. And, and it's a simple thing, but it'll keep the tap flowing, uh, you know, much, much fuller. Right, right. And and so a part of that is educating, you know, the people referring people in, your ideal customer, right? Yes. How would you go about doing that? Well, we have a we have a simple process. It's called the perfect introduction. I talk about it in the book. I mean that 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 with your existing customers that are out there going, Hey, how can we send you business? We you know, we want to refer you, um, is to actually have a process where you sit down with them and say, you know, here's how you'd spot our ideal customer. You know, here are the kinds of things they might say that would let you know they need us. Uh, you know, here's how to introduce us. You know, here's our process. Uh, you know, here's what we do when you introduce the lead to us. So, so actually kind of formalizing this in, in, you know, on a piece of paper or in a presentation or on a web page or something so that you can use it as a training tool uh, is a great process. Now, uh, the flip side of that is going back to our strategic partners. That's also a great tool uh, for you to recruit strategic partners with. We, we also take that tool 
and we send a letter to these strategic partners and, and we say, hey, you know, so-and-so said we should be talking to you, uh, that you, you're the best at XYZ and uh, we have some clients that actually might uh, use your services and we'd love it if you could teach us the best way to introduce you to our, uh, to our clients. And by the way, here's a form we'd love for you to fill out that says, you know, how would we spot your ideal client? <laughs> you know, those, that, that exact same process, um, using that tool to actually recruit strategic partners by, by asking them to teach you about their business. And I'll tell you what, that approach, that single approach, uh, certainly makes uh, recruiting strategic partners much easier because you, you've you turned the tables and instead of saying, hey, we want to tell you everything that's great about us so you can send us business, you're actually inviting them first uh, to uh, to teach you about their business. And, and boy, that gets attention uh, far greater than any other approach. Right, right. And, and I would think, you know, formalizing this, instead of, you know, you meet someone at a networking event, like, oh, we should do something together and nothing yeah. ever happens. I think formalizing right. this, getting this down, having a page on your site that targets them, you know, like, I think that would help tremendously, right? Yeah, well, uh, we've I've spent a lot of time teaching people this this idea of trigger phrases, um, even creating a sheet of paper that says something like, "Here's the kinds of things people say that that would let you know, you know, they're a great candidate." Because uh, a lot of times, I, I work with a lot of software companies for some reason over the years, um, and and you know, they would always get frustrated because it's like, well, they don't know that our stuff does this and it does this and it does this because it was like, hey, we have great accounting software. Well, nobody nobody goes out there on the on you know playing golf with their buddy and says, gosh, I sure wish I had some better accounting software, right? They say things like, my accountant's after me because our, you know, our data is now in the same place or, right. you know, our, our bills are always late, you know, being paid. And I mean, it's those kinds of complaints that I call trigger phrases, you know, that would allow that, that, that I actually teach people to create a sheet of paper that has these phrases on them and, and basically say, hey, if you hear anybody say one of these things, give them our card. I mean, and that's, you know, make, doing everything you can to make referring you uh, easier is, is certainly part of the system. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So. So you differentiate a regular lead with, uh, with a referred one, right? So, so why exactly should you uh, treat a referred lead, uh, you know, differently? What's the what's the thought process there? Well, well, there's a couple of reasons. First off, I mean, anytime you have the opportunity to personalize your communication uh, with a lead, you know, the better. I mean, and again, we could talk about that uh, that topic alone, you know, on a lot of levels. But certainly, you have this extra data about a, a referred lead. You know, somebody sent them to you, right? I mean, so so it's a great opportunity to personalize. It. It's a great opportunity for you to reward, in a way, your friend for saying, "Hey, so and so said we, you know, you're great. We need to take care of you." I mean, there's, 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 you know, another element to that as well. The other thing about a referred lead that is different is, in some cases, uh, they're on a different sales cycle. <laughs> they're on a different timing cycle. If somebody comes to your website, goes to a webinar, calls you up, says, "We need to talk to one of your guys because you know you've identified our exact problem. Come on down." Right? I mean, that's one sales cycle. A lot of times, a referred lead um, is somebody that you know your brother-in-law says you need help, right? <laughs> right? And so I'm going to refer you to so and so. Well, that person may not actually know they need help yet. <laughs> um, so you know, in a lot of cases, uh, you you have a different education process that you have to employ. You know, as I said, maybe a different timing. Um, you know, they, maybe they need some nurturing uh, as opposed to you know getting ready to go. So uh, so those. I mean, in some cases, they may be out there you know crying for help, and their buddy said, yeah, call them, and you go on down, and you sell them. Um, but but I think you need to be prepared. You know, for treating that lead different gotcha gotcha cool cool so switching gears now into podcasting because you've been right. podcasting for a while i really like your show i've been listening for quite some time now um so so what really got you into podcasting and how has it helped your business Great. well i i mean i determined fresh seven, eight, nine years ago that that content on the web you know was was definitely what i wanted to do it was going to make life easier uh there was a a, a very Quick correlation, even back in those days, to uh, to content and and SEO success, um, and and so uh, for me, it started off just being another kind of hey, this looks like an interesting way to create content to spread content. Um, I'd been blogging for probably a year at that point already as well. Um, but when I quickly found out, so I mean, I really my first attraction was hey, another way to create content. But uh, what I quickly found out was that in circles that that 
we're online, that we're a little tech savvy, that, that certainly have heard of this term podcasting, you know, back seven, eight years ago. It was a great way for me to get an interview with people that had I sent them a thing and said, hey, let's chat sometime, you know, it would have been delete. Uh, but when I sent them an email and said, interview request, I'd like to have you on my show. It's just me and my mom that listened to it, but <laughs> but they didn't know that. No, um, but 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 really, there was sort of this lure or a lure of the idea of of a podcast or of an interview. Um, you know that that even me, you know, today. I mean, I, I'll get requests from a publication that is so far out of you know my uh, expertise, you know, or, or or industry. But I still, it's very hard for me to say no to an interview. And I, and I think that that's uh, an aspect that uh, you know I, I I tell people all the time. I don't care if you have ten listeners to your show. This will give you access to, to people in your industry, maybe to potential customers, um, but, uh, as well as this idea of creating content, which we've all sort of come to the realization is, is a must. Um, so, so that's really, you know, that's, that's my secret, uh, dirty little secret to, to, you know, to podcasting is uh, the access that it'll give you is reason enough to do it. Yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, it's a win-win, right? Like, you know, they're getting exposure and you're getting content. Right. So it's it's really a win-win situation. All right. So, you know, your, fir your first list of, of 15 guests when you go out and start your show tomorrow um, should be your strategic partners. You know, put, put them all on your show. Give them a content opportunity. Um, that's one of the ways you differentiate yourself uh, with your strategic partners is by by creating that that win for them. Um, and and a lot of these things like that that I'm talking about with the strategic partner network is how you attract. Uh, bigger names, better strategic partners this is how you get them sort of motivated to want to introduce you to to, to your uh, to their clientele and and you know podcasting is or or video casting or however you want to uh, take it is just a, a tremendous way to get started and and give them the, give them that exposure as you said. Right, right, and I think it builds on itself, right? Each episode, you know, you get you kind of can, can get more access to more and more people as they see your sure. show kind of is more uh, you know ballot in the market has a bigger audience etc right exactly exactly and and you know you, you in your industry I mean, uh, you get uh, you get the the president of an association or somebody that's that, that's written a bestseller, you know, that that deals with a topic in your industry. You know, that alone is a great differentiator. And your competitors don't have that, uh, you know, on their site or don't have that video to share with their customers. And uh, so I think that's another aspect of it as well. Right, right. Is there a reason you went with audio as opposed to video or another method? Uh, at, you know, at the time, I, again, as I started my show, I think in two thousand and five, and the audio was. Was very easy. Uh, the I was I was still recording with a device over telephones. Um, the the video part of it has as as is evidence today, and and you know Google Plus's new um, new video uh, um, hangout uh, tool. I think is going to we're going to see a lot of video come out of that. Um, and and uh, you know Facebook video, YouTube video, all that stuff has just come you know leaps and bounds in the last few years. Um, I'm doing actually more video myself, but you know I've got thousands of subscribers to the audio feed and. Uh, you know, I want to keep them happy too. Cool, cool. So, so I asked this question the other day on our Facebook fan page. You know, uh, do you listen to any podcasts? What are your favorites? So, same question to you. Um, do you listen to uh, any other podcasts? <clears throat> um, and, and what would you recommend out there? <laughs> you know, this this is going to be a terrible answer. Um, I don't listen to any other podcasts, and it's really I know it's terrible. Um, but and it's really not and it's really purely a, a, a timing and you know what works for me doesn't work. I read, uh, I subscribe to several hundred blogs um, and still you know read those religiously. Um, I just don't have a routine where I you know put on a set of headphones and <laughs> and and listen to shows. So, so what are, what are some of those other sources that you keep up with trends? Well, um, I, as I said, the blogs you know that I read are, are certainly a tremendous resource for that. Um, I, I'm a big fan of, of some of the bookmarking sites, you know, like Dig and Delicious uh, um, are really great places for me to get you know inspiration for content. Uh, I do subscribe to a number of the of the Smart Brief. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar with those uh, those folks' um, uh, topics, you know, because again that. That in many cases uh, exposes me to, to content that I don't have to go chasing. You know, it kind of comes to me. Um, those are probably uh, some of my best sources. Certainly, uh, the phone, Twitter, um, uh, you know, and, and some of the pages that, on Facebook that I follow uh, certainly promote content or, or kind of mine content that I might not find uh, otherwise. 
Um, I, I do think, you know, from a business standpoint, I know a lot right now, it's a lot of the geeks kind of just talking to each other on, on this Google Plus. But I, I do think uh, uh, that's going to be another potential um, source of, uh, of content as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested to see what uh, happens there. So if you could give one piece of advice to the marketers out there watching right now or listening for that matter, what would it be? Well, going back to this topic of, of referrals, um, I would say um, look at your entire, every single way in which your, your business uh, comes in, or people in your business come into contact with, with prospects and customers uh, or, and maybe add a few ways that you should be <laughs> coming in, into contact with, with your customers and your prospects um, and, and analyze every one of those touches and, and see, you know, is it a marketing, are you sending the marketing experience, uh, you know, with those? Um, you know, I talk about uh, the definition of marketing is getting someone who has a need to know, like, and trust you. Well, what are your know, like, and trust uh, touches? You know, and after that, what's your try, buy, repeat, and refer? You know, what are all those kind of processes or products or services that, that logically move people down, you know, through that experience to the point where every prospect that comes to know about your business, ultimately the goal is to get them to be a referral source. Well, what are what are some of the gaps you're going to need to plug uh, in the experience or what are some of the changes you're going to need to make in some of your processes so that, that all of those touches uh, send very positive and, and fun and simple uh, marketing uh, experiences. Awesome. So where can people find you online? Well, the, the simplest place is, is ducttapemarketing.com, and that's D-U-C-T-T-A-P-E, uh, marketing.com. And from there, I have a newsletter as well, uh, uh, the, the, the email form, uh, certainly the blog and, and the podcast that you talked about, uh, but, but lots of other content there as well. And, and, and you know, as, as well as our products, I mean, I, you mentioned a couple books, but I also have a kind of home study course for marketing that's based on duct tape marketing, and I have a whole network of of independent marketing consultants around the world that actually if, if you if what I talk about resonates and you want somebody to hold you accountable and help you install that system of marketing uh, uh, you can actually hire one of those folks to do that awesome awesome cool well, thanks for coming on the show John I really appreciate it I think you shared some valuable uh, referral insights here with the audience and yeah That's I so. want to get you back sometime right. you bet you bet now I'll, uh, uh, I'll I'll be in Boston sometime when you guys are doing the uh, the live TV show too, and I'll uh, yeah, I'll jump yeah, I'll, I'll in, jump we'll in that too. Studio interview. You bet, you bet. All right.